Hello, everybody. So I wanted to create a video here on our next project with the logo. And it was for a couple of reasons. One, I really wish that when I had done the little mini lecture, not had I only taught you about the nature of logos, but that I also would have went directly to the directions and talk to you about that. I feel like at the close of class, this is for spring of 22 that I'm making this video, I got some awesome questions from folks and I'm like, darn it, I should have been covering this. Um, yet when I was covering it, we weren't officially on lecture time. So I think some people were talking um, about their projects, which was just fine. And then, you know, maybe somebody missed class, those kinds of things. So I thought I'd create a video just in case it would prove useful for you to try to make sure I'm supporting your pursuit of success. So give me one second, I'm gonna share my screen out. And hopefully you're seeing the directions over here to the left. So I'm just looking in there. We will have already started the stages process and I did spend some time talking about the stages again. So I think hopefully you get an idea of where we're headed with that. I also talk about making sure that you post things and you're willing to be critiqued and also willing to critique. And that the final part of this discussion board process is to post a revision plan. So that's not project specific. I am suggesting that you would put these, uh, your work up on SoundCloud, YouTube, Vimeo, whatever it might be. So that'll be part of what I covered in here. So let's talk about specifically what is expected. One, I want you to post an intention statement that you declare what is the hope for response in your logo, meaning if I want to create a logo that feels youthful and innovative, well, if I were to choose something like a classic black and be full of like lots of jagged images, I don't know like jagged shapes, I don't know that those are two design choices that help to convey that with a logo. Now they may, so this is the thing you've got to craft and be thinking about while you're crafting. What's the response you want on the other side of your project, okay? So you can write that up if you want, or as I'm gonna suggest later, what you might do is do your work and then just create a screencast where you tell me about your work, okay? So, I want you to tell me, why are you making your logo the way that you're making it? Okay, good. I'm also looking for your logo to exist in two versions. One is just a static still version and another is an animated version so that there's some kind of motion on your logo. The degree of that motion is going to be up to you and your artistry, your purposes for your logo and also your current skill set. So for some of us just taking, let's imagine it's the old MTV logo. They used to have an animated logo where it would shift, you know, it would have little colored dots on it and then it would change from colored dots to stripes. And that's a pretty basic animation. So <laughs> if that's the level you're at, then go for something like that. Like I could even imagine, pretend I'm your logo, that it might just do something like this. And that might be it. Uh, but for others of you, you might be more advanced with your animation skills. And so you might have your logo sort of hop onto the scene and maybe slowly fade away or back away, those kinds of things. So how much animation is going to be up to your intentions, your current skill set, those kinds of things. All right. Whatever it is, it just must represent art. So I wouldn't want, for example, um, an effort. I wouldn't want your logo to just do this. And that's all it does. It just moves from left to right. Well, that would be like so simple to do. You would just basically be taking your image and sliding it over on a canvas and then recording that. And it would be, that's not art or effort. So that's all I'm asking is that you do what you can do to the best of your abilities. Okay. Also, you may have a static version that is really, really beautifully aesthetically, but your animated version, there might be like a stick figure version of it. So maybe it's not in its full texture and its full colors. Maybe it's just like you've drawn it out and then you've gone to like one of the old flip books, you drew it out again, but this time smushed the angles in or something. And so you don't do it with all the texture. I'm willing to accept you where you're at as long as it represents 
art and effort, which is a bit subjective, but some of this stuff that we do in this class is subjective. Okay, let's move on. Post your hosted link, and then you're gonna critique that kind of stuff. So that is what I'm expecting. And so here's what you might do. It is not the only way for you to accomplish your work, but let's imagine that you were the one who crafted um, the Google logo. Well, what you might do is you've crafted this logo and then your intention statement could either be typed up or you might just like go on to Zoom and record your screen and talk about why you made the choices that you did. So you might, for example, say, I chose very, very vibrant colors because I wanted people to understand that when they go to this site, it is full of vibrant potential, like it can be life changing and life affirming. I chose to balance the bottom and the top in size because I wanted to make sure that the logo didn't feel like it was going to tip over or fall. I chose to put colors like yellow, which is really even kind of an orange, opposite of blue because blue and orange are opposite on the color wheel. And so they tend to create a little tension. So by having them in opposites, there's a little tension in this portion of the frame. I chose to go green and red and I can't, I can't you know, think of a reason why that would have been chosen. So I'm gonna stop my improvisation of this, right? And so my intention would be that people would understand in a very simplified fashion um, that this is a very, very dynamic place. Then you'd also have to defend, why don't you have any anchoring text? Why doesn't it say Google on here? Well, you might suggest that you're pretending that this particular brand that you've innovated um, is very, very well known. So you've uh, said that just the G and these colors will be sufficient. We no longer need anchoring text like something like this with Google, okay? And then you would just go ahead and play your animation on your screencast. So I don't know if they have Google animated image or animated logo. Let's just see. I don't know if I can play a animated version. There we go. So it's the, the word, the little symbol, and then the four thinking dots, right? And so that is an animation that they chose to do. And I could talk about my process and my intention of that too. Okay, everybody, I hope that that helps you as you're doing your work. There are other ways that you could publish your projects. You know, you can export a lot of these things, particularly in your Apple products as like MP4s, and then those could get loaded to YouTube and you could link to them, those kinds of things too. So screencast isn't the only way uh, to get your stuff shared out, but it is a way. Okay, appreciate all of you. Bye.